Today I got a 2008 X5. The complaint with this one is we have a passenger restraint system warning. And from the history, there was no accident. We got our health report. We could see a code in the ECM. That's not the complaint. And this is gonna be our SRS code or our airbag code. Nothing else seems related. So internal control unit fault. That don't sound good. It's a history code though. Let's try the AI analysis on it. It's a generic OBD2 code and can vary depending on the manufacturer. So these AIs, at least in the condition they are right now, are not very accurate for anything besides regular OBD2 codes because this is obviously not a OBD2 code. Let's try a Google search. Google's Gemini is actually more accurate. Show mantra's internal issue, airbag laid on, replacement modules, ECU error. Yeah, so this code seems to be related to the module itself. Let's see if we can get some basic data though. So, seatbelt buckles. The wording on the dashboard says it's for the passenger side. It's going to buckle my passenger seat. And that works just fine. Okay, so the weight class is working. Let's see if we can clear this fault. Fault has been deleted. I still see the warning up on the dash though. Yeah, it's still there. So for this code, well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a maintainer on here because 12.2 is getting pretty low there. And then I'm gonna actually grab ISTA and then we're gonna go from there. We got ISTA up and running. Looks to be the same faults. Still a history fault. No fault code description and same freeze frame. But now with ISTA, we can do our test plan. ISTE has all the information integrated into one, so you have the description operation, all the wiring diagrams, all in the software's description of how the system works. So ACSM is Advanced Crash Safety Module. Continue. All right, so the following code is stored in memory, 93D7, internal control unit fault, fault code only not present. And their solution is replace the module, replace crash safety module, A12. If an ignition circuit fault also occurs, we don't have an E6 or E85. This is a E70, so this doesn't really apply to us. So basically this fault code condemns the crash safety module. So it's an internal code. Let's see if we can figure out where this module is. So we have a pinout of that module. There's our wiring diagram to it. And from that picture, this module is right underneath there. So I wonder, if I have to take all this out and then information for service stack. It doesn't even want you testing it. I'm testing for powers and grounds, it looks like. If you make checks with your multimeter or other universal test tool, you could accidentally trigger the system. Use only BMW diagnosis system for system diagnostics. All right. So it doesn't look like we have any information regarding how to take this thing out. So. We're just gonna start pulling things out till we get to it. So in case you're wondering if all you had to do was take off the shifter assembly. No, that thing is buried underneath the vents. So it looks like this entire center console is gonna have to come out. After pulling this piece of side carpet, I finally got my first glimpse of this module here. So we finally got everything taken apart. And now we can see where that module is sitting at. And before we touch that airbag module, we're gonna disconnect the battery. Let's sit for a little bit to discharge any energy that's left over. And then we could unplug it and take it out. I'm no surprise, this thing isn't available new anymore. However, there is a current listing available. This last one here that shows that it is exchangeable. And we can now take that part number, search it, and we can see it runs about $700. So I talked to the owner about this and they made it clear that $700 for just the part was not an option. So while I was also searching this, I noticed that used modules seem to be pretty common for this application. So since the original module is no longer available, I found a similar one that came off of the same vehicle, uh, a little bit newer. However, it came from a vehicle. I was assured that it was a mechanically told vehicle and that it didn't have any accidents causing it. 
but sadly all the you picket junkyards in my area are all gone so i have to take the word of the junkyard that this came from a non-crash vehicle funny enough though i haven't done anything except plug the module in but i don't have any codes in that module and our warning is off so that's pretty interesting. I don't have anything fully tying down yet. I just have everything plugged in so that I can clear all these codes. All the codes that set because I was unplugging stuff. Steering wheel angle invalid. That's just because you have to turn the steering wheel a couple times. Let's actually do that right now. Should be good to start up. And there we go. That's cleared. Yep, now that's a history code. So on here on the 892, they actually call it the SRS module. More importantly, read fault codes. We see we have no faults. However, it could just be that it's because our vehicle has more options or has all the options that the old module has, but it may also have other options that it's not turned on on this module. So either way, we're going to code it. We can code through the 892. So we finished coding the module. We're going to rescan everything. Let's clear these codes and start her up. Let's see if we got anything new. We know that, that those fog light codes were there before. We also had a code for the condensation sensor, I believe. So that should be coming back as well. Yeah, so that condensation sensor came back. Our footwell module should be coming back pretty soon with the code and now that we have everything back together modules all coded we have no warnings up on the dash so for about 30 bucks and a few hours of labor we're able to get this vehicle fixed so i want to address a couple things about this module that if you're not familiar with may not make much sense first off this is an airbag module and this big old thing is a capacitor as you can see, I took off the power a few seconds ago and we could see that we still have voltage as this capacitor discharges. So this is acting like a big battery. So when you disconnect the battery from the vehicle, this is still storing energy. That's why you want to wait preferably an hour or so after you unplug the battery just to make sure that all the energy out of these capacitors are discharged because this can still hold power that in the event you take this off, rotate it, the vehicle may think it was in a crash and deploy the airbags. So another thing that I'm sure is going to come up is questions about airbag reset services. So that right there is the EEPROM. It's a common chip you'll find in a lot of modules. Think of it like the modules memory card is going to store data like VIN numbers, coding, and if you disconnect the battery, it's going to keep its memory. It's also going to store things like crash data for an airbag module. And a lot of services you see online, they're going to have you read that EEPROM. So you're going to use a tool similar to this. You hook up to that EEPROM, you read out its information, you send it out to one of those services online, and they basically reset it for you so that that module or that EEPROM reports that none of that ever happened. It clears all its history. So for most other modules, that's not too much of a concern. But when it comes to an airbag, you of course need this thing to work and there's not too many ways to test that it's going to work in this, in this scenario.